Hello everyone, thank you for joining us wherever you are. I'm Gulo from JDPNS, will be your host. Now we are with Daniel Carecas Batra, a marine biologist from Peru and regional representative of the Sustainable Ocean Alliance in Latin America, and also co-founder of the Taking Care of the Ocean Collective. Hello Daniel, how are you? Pretty good, I am pretty good here in Peru, currently in the winter, experiencing a little cold and humidity. And yes, thank you, Daniel, for joining us. And we are really excited to have you here. And then back to the first questions. When and were you, Daniel, when you first realized that you wanted to fight for ocean and marine diversity? Well, when I first decided to start studying marine biology when I was around 17 years old, I thought there was going to be a very general and and amplified view of marine biology that was gonna let me do many different things in, in ocean issues. But I realized early on in the career that it was just in a really small focus of, of just basically doing academy, an academy career. Mm -hmm. So I realized that there were so many ocean issues that were just being found to be solved and just by doing publications and just producing science. But I thought there needed to be an approach also on action, activism, political incidents that would be complementary to all this scientific knowledge that was being generated from the academia directly. All right. And then you're standing out for seabed mining in Peru. How was it and how does seabed mining affect the ecosystem and human beings? Well, seabed mining is the last human activity, extractive activity we can prevent or we can plan before it occurs. So we have a really, as humans, we have a big opportunity in planification, studying, producing the science necessary to understand the deep sea ecosystems. Sadly, in these days, the amount of fisheries we need, the amount of, of, of coastal humans that depend on the ocean, we cannot risk any of the services that the ocean provides just for mining the ocean directly. It's a deep seabed mining is an activity that will take polymetallic nodules, cobalt crust, hydrothermal vents from the ocean floor without really understanding the short-term or the long-term impact it will have not only on the ocean floor, but also on the whole water column and on the, all the services that the ocean provides. That's why we're looking for a deep seabed mining moratorium in Peru. We're proposing mm -hmm. the first deep seabed mining um, moratorium in Latin America as a bill on national waters. And also we're in, looking to to generate a political incident on the ISA, which is International Seabed Authority, to promote a high sea moratorium on deep seabed mining. That's interesting. And then how do you start a Sustainable Ocean Alliance Hub in Peru, and what are you doing there? Well, like I mentioned, when I was in, in early on in my career in university, I saw that there needed to be a space where there was youth empowerment, where youth would lead on, where youth would meet, where youth would create a space, mm -hmm. and where youth would have a voice in, in the conversation of conservation mm -hmm. and sustainability. I think it was really important also in our career to be involved with just as a learning practice. Being involved also means that we can get to learn so we can be better prepared when we're older. And there was really a, a big space of exclusion for us young people in the in the ocean dialogue and that's why i started the soa peru hub we also looked for political incidents we basically did what we were best at which is young people were very good connectors we're very good at creating friendships at motivating at uniting people from different frontiers from police policy from private companies civil mm -hmm. society and we're really good connectors and that's what we started doing we created our events and we now have the biggest well, SOE Peru now has the biggest um, youth ocean leadership network in the country. Wow. Wow. That's amazing what you have been doing in Sustainable Ocean Alliance in Peru. And then in your opinion, Daniel, what are the most pressing issues about the ocean? And what might be the best possible solutions for them? Well, for me, I think the most pressing issue in ocean is loss of biodiversity. I think we need to be talking about defoundation and defoundation comes with many different things. Mm -hmm. It comes with overfishing, plastic pollution, acidification, warming, um, deoxygenation. Right now, activities with deep seabed mining um, 
unregulated and uncontrolled fisheries. It's many, many different things that need to be tackled. But I think the most pressing issue is the loss of biodiversity. I think many people in the ocean world are just looking at the ocean about on regards to the to the economical benefits that it that it brings. But the ocean has much more service and also things that don't provide us that are, are, are necessary to connect to other services that are terrestrial services. So I really do think that the most pressing issue is biodiversity loss. And we're at a key moment, a key stage where we can prevent this from getting worse. And that's where I think we need to have incidents. All right. So how about the possible solutions to offer to solve those pressing issues? Well, we first need to realize that there is a problem with defaunation, which means that we're losing biodiversity, we're losing animals, we're creating changes in, com- in behavior, changes in, in, in reproductive and physiology behavior, changes with the climate change that's occurring, changing, changes that occur in the ecosystem and the habitat that are occurring also. I mean, there's two types, there's two main ways that we're losing biodiversity. One is direct hunting, direct fishing, direct extraction, and also by loss of habitat. So we first need to have a really good assessment of, of, of the causes of loss of biodiversity, where the fisheries is, going, is occurring, where the extractivism is occurring, and how the, the loss of habitat is occurring, where the, the, the dead zones are with oxygen depletion, where the plastic pollution is more occurred. And then based on that, we need to have a lot of political incidents, and not also political incidents in regards to bill promotion, in regards to constitutional changes, but we need to have a, a much bigger role in that by building i think youth we have a very important role in building a new future in a new in a new vision of how politics needs to be so that's why i think it's very important for conservationists from biologists mm-hmm. for people that understand have some empathy for nature to be so much involved in policy because they're the ones who are going to be constructing the next place thank you daniel and how do you tell your community and youth around you about the importance of the ocean it depends I think everyone in, in, in our region sees the ocean as different, something different, you know. Talk to fishermen, for example, and they see the ocean just as a resource provider. You talk to divers about the ocean, they see the ocean as full of many colors and, and many very beautiful animals. And as uh, you see the ocean for sailors and then you see it as a big space of just road to, 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 to navigate over there. I think it's important that people, specifically, everyone in our community that really no one has a very big relationship with the ocean today. I think that's the first reason to understand. Many people say, oh, I have a really good relationship with the ocean. But I mean, to really have a good relationship with the ocean mm-hmm. should mean living constantly in there. And not everyone has that. And those people that really don't have a um, good connection with the ocean are the ones mostly making the decisions about the ocean. So I think it depends on who we're going to talk to when we when we talk about the ocean. I mean, and that's one of our main agendas at SOA. How do we involve medical people? How do we involve administrators? How would we involve economists? How do we involve entrepreneurs? How do we involve everyone in the ocean conservation? And it's different languages altogether, but all need to come down. It needs to come down to first that it's it's the source of our life. You know, it's connected to everything. It's connected to to to, to from the oxygen we breathe to the sustainability of our land resources to the way our climate behaves. But I think it depends on, on who we're going to talk to that our language is going to be modified. Thank you, Daniel. And then what does the ocean mean for you? For me, it's a frontier. It's a last frontier of a really... One of the things that I was saying is that I, I really would have loved to see how the earth would have looked like before all the loss of biodiversity occurred in, in, in land. You know, we used to have big mammals, um, incredible species that have disappeared since humans have started arriving. You know, since humans arrived in Latin America around 12,000 years ago. And I have not been able to see any of this, all these wonderful creatures that used to be here. Um, but there's a place where there, we can still see see these wonderful creatures where we can still protect and coexist with them. And that's the ocean. That's because the ocean was vastly inaccessible to humans. So I think it's a last frontier that, I, that we can make a place safe and make a place that, that we can create an, a, new, a new truly living with nature environment. 
So that's what I see the ocean as, a new frontier of hope. Thank you. And then last question. What would be your message for youth about the ocean? Well, I think we need to stop being anthropocentric. That will be my last message to youth. We need to stop thinking just of humans. Sometimes even social um, implications don't benefit the ocean or nature as well. So I think we need to understand that nature needs to go first. And we need to adapt our laws or ways of living around nature. We cannot make nature adapt to our necessities and to our privileges. So I think my last message is we need to start feeling part of the ecosystem and not putting ourselves first. Thank you so much, Daniel, for your inspiring story. <laughs> and then thank you everyone for joining us. Let's collaborate to make this world into a better place. I am Glo from Jadi PNS. Thank you and see you again. Thank you, Gulu. <laughs>